This is Boxing Talk 8576. I want to go back into the, to the archives of some great fights. Um, I'm going to do this from time to time. Go back and talk about great matchup uh, fights that happened um, in the history. And the one I want to talk about today is the Julio Cesar Chavez Sr. versus Meldrick Taylor fight. This was built as a mega fight in the lower weight classes. Uh, these two fighters, these were two great fighters at the time. Uh, Chavez was 27 years old. He had 66 wins with, with zero losses and 56 KOs. Uh, Melger Taylor came in. <clears throat> I mean, Chavez was a WBC champ. Melger Taylor came in <clears throat> with a record of 23 wins. And he had only 14 KOs, so he was not a big puncher. But uh, Chavez was known as to be really a real tough fighter back in those days. He had very little to no amateur, you know, background. So he fought a lot of fights early. He was he was 66 and 0 and, and only 27 years old. So he fought a lot early and often. So he probably turned pro at 16. Because in in, uh, in um, Mexico, you can turn pro at 16. you got to be 18 in the U.S. Melger Taylor won a gold medal, so he was a decorated amateur. He um, was one on one of the greatest amateur um, teams of all times. Um, so they came in in this fight undefeated. Uh, it was built as a super fight of little men. <clears throat> Anything below the heavyweight division was considered, you know, not as exciting for people to look forward to because, you know, people like knockouts. But this fight right here was billed as a super fight and people was really, really wanted to see this fight. They thought Melger Taylor would, would be the first guy to um, beat Chavez. Because Melger Taylor threw a, a lot of punches. He, his hand speed was tremendous. He had tremendous head speed. Um, he had foot foot movement. He had head movement. So I remember in the interview he, he said that he thought he would win the fight because he threw a lot of punches. And his plan was to throw three punches to Chavez one punch. <clears throat> I actually seen this fight live. I think I was maybe... 15 years old and I really I really was just not getting it really getting into boxing I'll see boxing sparingly you know like with my uncles and stuff like sit around and watch boxing but I really was kind of like getting into it because I was watching football and basketball at the time a lot but I remember this fight coming on vaguely remember this fight and I remember watching the fight and I didn't know that much about boxing and I heard a commentator saying that Meldrick Taylor, Meldrick Taylor was way up on the scorecards, but I thought the guy that had the most damage done to his face was the one that was losing the fight. So I thought Meldrick Taylor was losing the fight because his face was messed. His face was like gradually getting messed up and messed up as as they started getting to like round six and round seven, round eight. And I was saying to myself, how is they saying this guy is dominating the fight and his face is messed up like that? That's that's how much I didn't know about boxing. I didn't know about the technical ex aspect of what was going on in the ring, who was landing the most punches and all that. I was just going by how his face looked. His face was looking bad. But he was outclassing Chavez. As I got to know more about boxing, I went back and looked at the fight. Yes, he was outclassing Chavez, and Chavez Corner kept telling him, man, uh, do it for your family, do it for your son. He's out, he's out working you out there. You got to do it for your people, and... And Chavez, the one thing Chavez was doing was Melvin Taylor was landing three to one, but he wasn't. It wasn't a lot, a lot of power behind his punches. It was good snap, but it wasn't a lot of a lot of power. And Chavez, Chavez was landing like bone crunching punches, man. Like he'll only get one in out of out of um, when Melvin Taylor land three. Chavez was going to get one in, but he'll get a one in power punch, like a cracking punch, like you heard it, like it was like a thump, like pow. And he was going. He was known to go to the body, so he was going to um, Melvin Taylor body a lot. Cause Melvin Taylor was, he had a game plan of of uh, landing three to one. But when you do that, 
you stay in the pocket too long because you're throwing a lot of punches. He was throwing like five or six punch combinations a lot of times to land three. So Chavez was making was punishing him for throwing all those punches. Chavez was countering him and he was going to his body a lot. Like he was beating his body up and Major Taylor started slowing down. The the tide in the fight start I thought Major Taylor won the first nine out of ten rounds and the tide started changing like the uh, like the end of round nine. You seen uh, Taylor slowing down. You seen him slowing down. His his punch output started slowing down. He started fighting at a slower pace. That because he one he was taking a lot of a lot of abuse to the face, but he was taking a lot of body shots, and the body shots is what slowed him down. And he had to be tired too because he was throwing a lot a lot of combinations. It takes a lot out of you. I used to fight. It takes a lot out of you when you throw combinations. You need to get your win after you throw those combinations. And he was throwing combinations and he was moving a lot too. He was moving and throwing combinations, moving and throwing combinations. That was like the first six or seven rounds he was doing that brilliantly. So that's why he was outclassing Chavez. But Chavez was putting in the putting those body punches in the bank and then it told the tail at the end because he slowed him down and he started hitting um Taylor with more and more punches. And then at the end of round 11, he hurt Taylor real bad, but the bell rung, and Taylor went back to his uh, his uh, corner, and his corner was telling him, just box, you know, don't go out there and take too many chances, just box and stay away from him. But by Taylor being a Philadelphia fighter, he's from Philadelphia, by him being a Philadelphia fighter, they fight, you know, with a lot of passion, you know what I'm saying, and they and they come they come to fight, they, they come to fight, like they say, they come to fight, so... He didn't stay away from Chavez. Really, I don't think he really could stay away from really effectively anyway at this point because Chavez has put had put so much body work in that he was unable to uh, Taylor was unable to move like he wanted to in the in the beginning rounds. And um, I just remember the commentator saying uh, Chavez, if he can make it to the end of the fight, he's going to win the fight. He's going to win the fight hands down. But it started getting like a minute to go. Chavez landed these hard punches, and then he hurt he hurt Taylor with a, uh, a a right a straight right hand. Bagged Taylor up to the ropes, turned Taylor around, and as soon as Taylor turned around, Chavez came with that cracking right hand. Wow, dropped Taylor. And uh, Richard Steele came over and started counting. Taylor got he got right back up, but he was a little woozy. But at this at this time when he went down it was like 15 seconds it was like maybe 20 seconds when he went down and then once he got up and Richard Steele started counting I think he, Richard Steele got to like five or six he got up then Richard Steele was asking him was he okay was he okay and Taylor didn't say nothing to him initially he didn't say anything but it was only like by the time Richard Steele got sent, got got uh, done saying were well, you okay it was only like six seconds left. So it, it would have took it would have took Chavez three seconds to come over there uh, to start punching Taylor again, and it was no way he was gonna knock him out at that point because it would took him three seconds to get over there. He would have had to punch Taylor. Then it was, the time would have been gone. So it, it ended in controversy because a lot of people said that Richard Steele should should have let the fight go on because it was a championship fight, and um. Taylor did deserve, in my opinion, to at least finish those last couple seconds because he won the fight, man. He outclassed the man for the first nine rounds. He had the fight won. It was in the bag. Yes, Chavez knocked him down, but yes, Taylor got up. He got up, pulled himself up, and he should have been awarded the last five or six seconds, man, to win the fight. And in my opinion, it was a travesty that he would, didn't um, win the fight, but I know they said it was a lot of things going on behind closed doors. That Richard Steele was in um, Don King's back pocket. He was one of the one of the refs that Don King wanted because he favored, you know, Don King fighters. That's when Don King was like a powerhouse back back in the day. That's when he had like he was like Golden Boy is now. He had all the top fighters, and everybody say that um, that uh, Richard Steele. Did, did a lot of fights for uh, um, Don King fighters and and I guess that was 
that was one of the uh, things that the uh, Taylor camp had uh, problems with was Richard Steele. But um, it was a great fight. It was a great fight in the sense that what made it a great fight is Chavez was able to catch up with Taylor at the end and knock him down and win the fight. And Taylor, by dominating um, Chavez in the first nine or ten rounds, was really shocking to people because people, they thought that Taylor had a chance to win, but they never thought Taylor would, would dominate Chavez like that. But the thing was, Chavez never fought a fighter like Taylor before with that hand speed and that foot movement. And can move around like that because Chavez does have have problems with uh, boxers. He had problems with Pennell Whitaker, and they stole that fight from Pennell Whitaker. And Pennell Whitaker outclassed him, in my opinion, in an opinion of a lot of people. So Taylor was a great fighter. After that fight, he was never the same because I think he had like a bone broke in his face and. He um was was urinating pure blood and you know what I'm saying and once you once that stuff start happening to you, that's not good for your body for uh blood to be coming out of your urine that's not good at all. He was never the same fighter after that because once you have like grueling fights like that and at that level that they was fighting at they was fighting at the highest level, not the Gotti Ward level. Gotti Ward was a great fight but they wasn't fighting at the highest level. This fight was at the highest level and. He um took a he took a a beating and even though he won the fight, uh, Chavez you know beat him up like beat him up like beat him up to the point where you know he had a facial fracture and he was urinating pure blood. So yeah, Major Taylor was a great fighter. He was never the same after that. He never really got back to form of the fighter he was before that fight and now. He got like brain damage. He has a slur speech. I I seen an um, interview with him. His speech is slurred. Um, he fought too long after that too. He fought like, you know, when he was one supposed to be fighting. You know, I think I don't know how he how he passed the uh, the physical to box again because with that speech and his motor skills was like down. You know what I'm saying? Was definitely gone was downhill after that fight. I don't know if they was all the way gone, but they were going downhill. And for him to still be fighting when he was like 35 or 36, something like that, I don't see how in the world he was able to keep his boxing license. But that's another subject for another day to talk about how these, fighter, how these fighters are uh, allowed after they take all this brain damage and show signs of brain damage and their motor skills slowing down on why boxing is still allowing these guys to fight. But that's another video. But it was a great fight. You know, Chavez went on to win, I think, like 80-something wins before he lost to uh, Randall. This guy named Randall, he lost to um, um, him, a person that no one seen beating him. He had beat Meldrick Taylor and beat Pernell Whitaker. Then he lost to some Randall, some Randall dude, but at the blue. But, um, yeah, it was a great fight. Um, this is Boxing Talk 8576. I'm out.